Hi, and welcome to the channel. Should you take flats when doing astrophotography? The widely accepted answer is yes. My answer, however, is a bit more nuanced. This video is probably going to upset some of the hardcore astrophotographers out there because I'm going to take a position which is against the widely accepted narrative. First of all, I'd like to stress that if the circumstances support it, you're almost always better off and get a better result if you do take flats. Most serious astrophotographers take flats and they're essential for scientific work. But there are plenty of circumstances where taking flats is difficult, extremely time consuming, or simply downright impractical. Let's dive in. Why use flats? Without flats, your image can suffer from the effects of light pollution, light gradients, vignetting, dust on elements in the optical train, camera amp glow, and uneven sensor illumination. Flats help to correct for all of these things. So why not use flats all the time? First, let's talk about how you might take flats. Now, I'm not going to go into tons of detail on this because it's covered very, very well in lots of great tutorial articles and videos that are already out there on the web. So how do you take flats? There's generally two most common methods. The first method is the t-shirt method. In the t-shirt method, you take a clean white t-shirt or a sheet from a bed that's completely clean and devoid of any writing. And you put that around the objective of your telescope and secure it with a rubber band. And then point your telescope at the blue sky and take your flats. The second method is done at night. And that's where you use a light panel. You move your telescope so it's pointing at the zenith and you balance precariously your light panel on the top of the telescope and take flats a similar way. What are the problems with flats? Well, first thing I can tell you is I have a hyperstar. Hyperstar is a fabulous focal reducer, which goes on a Celestron schmidt cassegrain telescope and converts it from F10 to F2. A lot of my imaging is done with the hyperstar configuration, but the hyperstar juts out well beyond the end of the telescope. It's impossible to simply cover up the objective with a t-shirt or a flat panel, unless you add a huge dew cap, which by their very nature is not structurally solid. The other way is to take flats with a hyperstar and wait until just the right moment at dawn when the stars are invisible, but the sky isn't yet blue and image the sky just above the horizon. It's tricky and difficult for the timing for sure. I've tried that as well. Many times when I'm imaging, I'm out for the whole night and I want to image with different objects sequentially using different cameras and different filter combinations. Each of these requires taking separate flats. The only real workaround here is a light panel in the dark if you're not using a hyperstar. But light panels themselves have some challenges. First, you must point your objective at the zenith and precariously balance your light panel on the scope. Any slight tug on the cable will bring things crashing down. It also brightens the area for other observers and takes away from imaging time. I often image at remote sites. Let's say you're using the t-shirt method. If you're finishing imaging at 4 a.m., you have to wait for another two hours for the sun to be well up enough in the blue sky to take flats. In those two hours, you could have been packed up and driven home by then. You may have to stay on site hours after you really want to. Well, how do you mitigate the need for flats? These issues indicate taking flats is not always easy or convenient, but you still need to deal with light gradients and imperfections in the optical train. So what can you do? You can fix it in post-processing. But my advice is to reduce the amount of work you need to do in post-processing. Well, how can you do that? You reduce the amount of light and image imperfections that you have to deal with. My first recommendation is wherever possible, reduce the amount of light gradients you have to deal with by going to a dark site. I live in a Bortle 7 suburb, but can drive to a Bortle 4 site in 20 minutes, a Bortle 2 site in 90 minutes, and a Bortle 1 site in about 2 hours and 45 minutes. To find darker sites, there are some websites which make it much easier. And it really makes a huge difference, especially when you're imaging broadband objects. The gradients you will have to correct for are significantly reduced. The second recommendation is to clean your optical train. There really is no excuse for dust spots on your camera sensors or filters. 
You have all day to clean these up before you go observing. This essentially means camera sensor windows and filters on both sides. Eliminate all the small circles so you only have to deal with the one big gradient. So now you've mitigated your need to make flat corrections as much as you can. How do you go further and fix it in post? Well, there are many gradient correction tools available. I like to use AstroFlat Pro, which is a plugin for Photoshop and Affinity Photo. I should note that AstroFlat Pro does not currently work on Macs. It's a PC software tool. Here are some examples of before and after using AstroFlat Pro. I should note that I have had many of my photographs placed in magazines like Sky and Telescope, Astronomy, uh, BBC Sky at Night, and other places, and none of these photos used any calibration frames at all. So it is not a must to get a good result. Another method you can use is to make a synthetic flat frame using Photoshop or Affinity Photo. Finally, here are some examples of images I've taken without using any calibration frames at all. These are the kinds of results you can expect to get using the techniques I describe in this video. Hope this is helpful, and please click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.